Hey guys, welcome back to the Aquarium Library with Anne. Today I want to show you guys the simplified version of the automatic reader box that I set up for my dad was at my parents' house for Christmas. The biggest thing that makes this entire process so much easier than previously was that we're using most of the components of the Penplex reader box now. We're no longer using a 90 degree elbow and having to drill holes and silicone airline tubing into the elbow. We're just using all the stuff that comes with the Penplex and we're just taking off the collection area, putting in a half inch diameter tubing from that outlet of the breeder box into the inlet of the flu ball breeder box and we're ready to go and rock and roll. The only thing with this system now is that the airline is no longer coming from the side but it's from the bottom. An easy workaround is to get some either very flexible tubing or to get some rigid tubing to create a 180 degree sweep so that way the air doesn't get kinked at all inside the line and it just is able to flow very easily um, up through our system and into our brooder box to collect all of our eggs. We're using some old plexiglass like the stuff that's in the stores right now and just drilled a bunch of holes inside of it. And it's actually the same way you have your air line here with water getting pulled through here by the air going up into the collection box. He has been using Java Moss now and his results have been absolutely crazy. He has seven females in here and I think five males. In the last three days he's gotten 180 eggs, 90 today, 50 the other day, and 50 the other day. So the other difference that we did was there isn't anything, we didn't use a 90 degree elbow here, we used the normal um, actual part of the breeder box here and have the same plastic going along here and we just have a 90 degree. This is the hardest aspect of it was this was getting kinked with just a line like this. So we got a rather flexible airline tubing rather than the rigid one and now it's working a little bit better but we'd still like to have more air going into there. And then as the eggs go up, they go into the breeder box and I can show you guys how many eggs are actually in here. And I'll show you guys some of the different eggs that are bad and good. So we come over here, you can just see the multitude of them that are in here. I count about 90 as I was coming through and you can see them all lined up along the front here. Like I said before, they usually like collecting in the back, in this corner behind this little piece right here, and then along this entire side here. In the back, you can see there's a couple of bad eggs. There is an egg that's entirely fungus over, which is right there in the center of the screen. And there's an egg in the back that has a white part. And that white part is indicative of a bad egg that isn't fertilized. A normal fertilized egg is going to look like this. They are going to have a clear, around the outside and they're going to have a clear kind of discolored inside but it's not going to be white and if there's a white that is going through the entirety of the egg that's a bad egg and you want to get rid of it also after you're done cleaning it you want to make sure that you get all of the fish food removed from it um, because that will start fungusing over on eggs like this and you'll start having a proliferation of bad eggs throughout the entire thing so you want to make sure that you're coming through here and cleaning out this entire area after you collect the eggs put them elsewhere. But I just want to show you guys that this works for other people and it's a fantastic system and it's so much easier than what my dad was using before. Before he was using the same system that I had before with the box and uh, the yarn and there was a lot of time involved in it but now it's just as simple as taking the turkey baster, putting it in here and pushing all the eggs out down to the bottom, getting them collected and coming up here. And his previous system looked just like the one that I had before. It was just a false bottom. You see there with the yarn on top and this on the bottom and the eggs would collect on the bottom and he would come in here and remove the entire thing. But now it's very simple that all he has to do is just come in here with a pipette and just pull out all the eggs and put them into his floating box that is back there. If you guys want to see how I made this and all the parts needed, make sure to check out the video that I'll leave in the center. Hope you guys have a blessed day. See you in the next one. See ya.